Not only am I passionate about working with wood, but I also love working with cement. However, there is still a lot to learn. So I came to Wilmington, North Carolina because I wanted to meet with one of the best rock sculptors in the business, Warren Ness. I'm here at the studio to take a class to improve my skills and you can follow along. So let's go inside. I'm here with Mr. Rock Sculptor Warren Ness, the man, the legend. I'm here to take his decorative cement class. <laughs> decorative concrete. I'm here to take his decorative concrete class. So what made you want to teach? Well, my background, I was an uh, electronics engineer mm -hmm. in which I trained people on how to you know, handle protocols and electrical systems. So within that background, it was easy to transfer over and cross you know, pollinate, so to say, and training people how to do artistic creations with concrete. That's amazing. Well, I can't wait to take this class and you guys can follow along. So let's go. The class starts off with whiteboard just to get the basics. We talked about tools to use, the perfect mix and additives to get the best consistency in the cement, the shape, color theory and texture of the design. And then it was finally time to do my first mix. To apply the coat I just mixed, we used the box that was built out of XPS insulation board and had a scratch coat applied. More to this later, since I will show you how to build it. For now, I will learn how to properly apply a coat and form it into a stone-like texture. This is a great way to build fire pits, planters or even tables. The possibilities are endless. Apply the concrete on top of the scratch coat with an even pressure and upward movement. After you apply a thin coat, add some more cement in form of, mm, I would say, little turds you smash against the previous coat. Take a handful and bam! It is important to not get any air trapped in between the coats. I don't want this edge. Like, remember, the edges are critical. Edges, this, is, this stuff in here is secondary. Your edges are primary. I follow the instructions and now it's my turn. And that's how easy it is to work with vertical concrete. While this project is drying, Warren will show me how to pour a rubber mold. I've put many different molds before, but none of them in this size, so this will be a first. We are using clay and pieces of MDF board to build the mold. Roll the clay into little worms and that will be used to make the mold leak proof. Screw it all together by using a drill and apply a thin coat of mold release. Make sure you don't miss a spot. While this dries, it's time to tend to the vertical concrete project again. It dried enough to start the carving. This step is to make the cement look like real stone. Use a brick trowel and a paintbrush to carve the cement. A few more minutes and the first day is about to be done. This piece needs to dry overnight and I need some rest. I learned a lot of new techniques yesterday, but there's still a lot more to learn. It's day two. Follow me. And that's my creation from yesterday. I totally overdid it, but I learned with trial and error. Next up, we are mixing the rubber for the mold. This stuff is really expensive. So you do not want to mess up with measuring, mixing or pouring. So I need full concentration. Touch the same flower, our world has been 
shaking on Oh, that's your soul saying Oh, is your world changing? Oh, what's your soul saying? Remember, towards the beginning, I promised to show how the box is built and the scratch coat is applied? It's up next. The easiest way to cut the insulation is to use the jigsaw. For this project, I cut the pieces 60 by 60 centimeter or 24 by 24 inches. Use extra long screws and spray foam to glue the pieces together into a squared box. Wait a few hours to let the spray foam dry and then take out the screws. Take a wire brush to roughen the surface to give the concrete something to stick to. Make sure you only use the wire brush going from left to right, do not go up and down. A little clean up and that's how simple it is to build a box. The scratch coat mixture is similar to the mixture we used yesterday. However, this time we will add less additives and add fibers. Let's give it all a quick mix. Then slowly add the glass fibers. Once it's all combined, the mixture is ready to be applied. Use your hand to spread the mixture onto the box in an up motion. Do not go down or the mixture will not adhere to the box and will fall off. Warren says the coat should be about half an inch to three quarter inch thick. This box is all done. Now it just needs to dry for a few days. Warren has a mold that is the imprint of a piece of wood and when painted the right way it will look very similar to a real life edge wood slab. With wood prices being at an all time high, of course I wanted to give this a try. The first step is to cut the mesh, apply the mold release and then pour the cement. For the first coat, use a paint brush and brush the GFRC mix onto the mold. Make sure you do not leave out the edges or corners. Let the coat dry a bit, then add more of the mix on top of it. Once you fill the mold halfway, add the mesh, then add more of the mixture to cover the mesh. Let it dry overnight. Coloring the cement is the most important step to make the piece look realistic. Therefore, I'm learning a bit of color theory before I get to mix the colors. For the colors, we are using Warren's Colors brand. Make sure you mix the colors before you use them. Warren has me try out different colors on watercolor paper first, since dry colors look very different for wet colors. So always make sure you try out your color first before you start coloring your piece and end up with a shade that doesn't look natural. This is the color scheme I want for my piece. Of course, the GFRC mix I put earlier is not dried yet. However, Warren had prepared and pre-poured an identical piece so I can color it without having to wait for the piece to dry. Add colors in different layers and let them dry in between. And that was it for day two. It's day three. Follow me. Today will be a very short day, since I have to catch my plane back home. First up is to demold the mold. Isn't that the best feeling when you demold something and it comes out perfect? Well, I'm very happy with the results. This will make a nice edge to a cement mantle. The last project is to demold the GFRC Life Edge slab. It came out perfectly too. I love the wood pattern in the cement. To me, it is important to never stop learning. There is always something new out there to explore. It is amazing to be able to connect with other creators and share and learn new techniques from another. I cannot wait to create more videos for you guys and share more of the new learned skills and improve them along the way.
If you'd like to learn more in depth about concrete, Warren is the guy for you. He offers group and individual classes at his shop. It is a great way to polish up your skills. And we are fertig. Best part? I had another hour before my flight left, so I stopped by at the beach. Your face tells me always Thank you for watching. Cheers! Please like, comment and subscribe.